Uh, I'm going to do a little clap, do a little intro thing. Drew and I will talk. We'll introduce our two guests. We'll chat a little bit. Drew will go over the rules, not only for you, but for the viewers as well. Uh, so don't feel like you're trying to you know, be put on blast or anything like that. And then uh, we'll play some trivia and we'll have some fun. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. It is Trivia Tank in the year 2022. My name is Scott Van Conant. That right there is Drew Waldron. We have an awesome matchup coming up, Drew. Do we not? We absolutely do. I'm so excited for our first show of 2022. We have our returning five-time champion, the Ken Jennings of this show, Mr. Dan Locke, sitting to my left over here. How are you feeling, Dan? Feeling great. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And to my right, we have our newcomer for today, Miss Alexa Barros, a longtime fan of the show who has been begging to be on the show for a while. We finally were able to have an appearance. Alexa, what should the audience know about you? Um, I'm a little nervous, I'll be honest. Okay. Obviously, first time on the show, maybe my last. <laughs> That's true. I think this is the first person who's coming with that mindset, though. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you're going to have fun. Don't worry. Uh, are you scared at all, maybe? I'm nervous. I don't, I'm not really sure what to expect. Trivia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Alexa told me before we went in today that she was uh, reviewing tape. She was uh, rewatching really. old Dan episodes to see how, uh, how she could, you know, shape up against Dan. Dan, does that scare you at all? No, no, no. Wow. <laughs> all right. Very little phase Dan, phases Dan. Well, with that, Drew, uh, do you want to go over the rules I for think our, that's our a, gang? That's a fantastic thing for us to do. So here are the rules and format of Trivia Tank. There's going to be two rounds, each with five questions. The question topics will be shown at the start of each round. Players can wager one, two, three, four, and five points, but must wager each value once per round. Write your wager with your answer, and Scott, of course, will be keeping track. You're... You cannot lose points until the final question. There are no penalties for wrong answers. And there will be several special rounds followed by our final wager question. The special rounds are all worth two points. Are there any questions as to how we run this game? No, oh, it's pretty straightforward. Yes, cool. it is. Viewers, I do you guys have any questions? Tell us now. No, okay. I don't think they do. Should we start doing like a Dora thing? Or? Yeah. <laughs> we should what do you do. think? <laughs> Round one topics. Question number one is going to be about historical figures. Question number two is going to be about animals. Question number three is going to be about board games. Question number four is going to be about Washington, D.C. And question number five is going to be about Disney parks. So as always, I'll start with uh, our newcomer. Alexa, are there any question topics that jump out at you? Uh, maybe historical figures. Historical figures. Why does it jump out? Do you like it? Are you scared of it? Um, a history major. Okay. Ooh. Dan, does that advantage that's Alexa? information that would have been nice to know. <laughs> Is he well, shaken? You did no. say you are taking a history class at the moment. Oh, so one history that class. Is, that means for graduation. Something. Advantage Dan. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. With that, let's jump into question number one, historical figures. And the first question of our show is, question number one, which U.S. historical figure appears on the Purple Heart Medal? Is it Thomas Jefferson, Martha Washington, George Washington, or John Adams? Uh, so it looks like Dan... Has been kind of ready to go over there. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Which is, Alexa, no worries. Oh, I'm good. Is your marker good? There's no time. It's, it's, it's just a little a, funny. Your marker's a little funny. Just deal with it now. Don't, don't show your oh. answer, please. <laughs> yeah, no, never do that. Uh, if you need a new marker, we probably won't get you one, but I'll think about telling our producer to get you one. But again, will not happen, most likely. Uh, so do we have answers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We're good. All right. Please show me what you said. Flipper board's over. Alexa said it was George Washington for two points. And Dan said it was John Adams for two points. One of them is correct, Scott. That's great. So as you, uh, as you guys know, George Washington was the first president of the United States. He was also the one that they put on the Purple Heart. Congratulations, Alexa, for Thank getting you. on the board and first. And the history major is the first to score in this game of Trivia Tank. Did you, like, know that? No, I guessed. Dan, you worried yet? No. Wow. Nothing shakes him. Well, I guess history's out of the way. <laughs> Thank so. God. For now. Yeah, for now. So let's move on to question number two. And here's question number two. In the way that the term bovine <clears throat> refers to cows, what does the term vulpine refer to? Does the term vulpine refer to goats, sheep, chickens, or foxes? I wonder if she knows it. I feel like she has a good idea. I don't know why. I'm, gu I'm guessing. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Dan, Dan looks ready. I think, I think I'm ready. ready. Kind of feel like Jim Nance at the Masters. <laughs> Are we ready? All right, please show me what you said. Alexa said sheep for one point, and Dan said goats for one point. Both of them not confident. What's the correct answer, Scott? Either of you guys ever play Pokemon? I was playing it before I came here. 
You know, you know who oh, Vulpix dude, is. <laughs> Vulpix Damn. is pretty much a fox. We were looking for foxes. That's Isn't how I got this one. Yeah, that's that's the way I would have been able to guess. Obviously, <laughs> it was written in front of me because I have the answers. But, but yeah, we we're looking for foxes. Vulpine refers to foxes, so we have no points there. Which popular board game coined the term "back to square one"? And again, which popular board game coined the term "back to square one"? Dude, this yeah. is our uh, this is our first episode with an in studio audience. Just about to say that actually. Off camera, we have <clears throat> Sam Reichelt. Sam, why don't you show the the folks at home your hand? Just your hand. Just a hand. Okay. Thank That's you very enough. much. That was a little bit more arm than I was hoping. But yeah, we fine. we said hand. Yeah. There's not much you can do there. It's, I understand. Yeah. All right, we got a couple. Are we good? We got a couple non writing contestants. So I assume that means that they're they're ready to go. Got an answer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Perfect. Show me what you said. Question number three: Which popular board game coined the term wow. "back to square one"? And Alexa said, sorry, for three points. And Dan said, sorry, for four points. Both Isn't the that same answer. Do you guys think you're both right? I think I'm right. I know I'm right. You're both wrong. The incorrect. <laughs> the answer we were looking for was the popular board game, Shoots and Ladders. Yeah. They coined the term back to square one. You know, because you because there's shoots and there's ladders and stuff. You know. yeah, I don't yeah, think you've ever played that. It's a good one. It's a good one. So let's move on to <laughs> question number four. Question number four. MLK gave his I have a dream speech in front of what DC landmark? Was it the Washington Monuments, the Lincoln Memorial, the Capitol Building, or the White House? Was anybody there? <laughs> no, none of in us. Spirit. I couldn't make it. None of us were at, at the speech. <clears throat> kind of always forget we have sound effects. I'm probably going to click one while they write. Yeah. Show me something good. <laughs> now oh, now so... I know. That's going to get used. Yeah. In, like, in an appropriate time. Yeah, quite. Isn't the uh, like top right? Isn't that applause? Uh, oh, close. close. There, that's the applause. That's what we're looking for. All right. Question number four. Please show me what you said. Alexa said that it was in front of the Washington Monument for five points, and Dan said that it was in front of the Lincoln uh, Memorial for five points. Scott, who's correct? Dan Locke is correct. Oh. Congratulations, Dan. Dan. Dan, first question, uh, correct today, takes the lead, five to two. <laughs> Little Miss History major, couldn't Look get that, that one. No, you got to remember, Dan is currently in a history <laughs> class. So that's, that's, yeah, true. Here. that's true. It is America in the 1960s, too. So. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens in question number five. Question number five, what was the first international Disney park? Hmm. Was it Tokyo Disneyland? Was it Disneyland Paris? Was it Hong Kong Disneyland? Or was it Shanghai Disney? One of these was the first international Disney park. Which one was it? You ever been to any of those places, Drew? I have not. I've only no ever been I. to Disney World. I as well. Damn. Been twice to Disney World. Might might go for a third time in March. Yeah. Who knows? Hey, let's uh let's commit right now to film the 20 year trivia tank anniversary special at Disneyland Paris. Okay. Okay. All right. Do we have answers? Mm -hmm. We all good. All right. Please show me what you said for question five. Alexa said that the first international Disney park was Hong Kong. And Dan said that it was Shanghai. What's the correct answer, Scott? The correct answer is in Asia, but it's Tokyo. Tokyo oh. Disneyland. Tokyo. It was the good first job eliminating Paris, though. At least you guys had the right continent. Smart. That was smart. Good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I hope that our guests are feeling special because next up is one of our special rounds. It's Dead or Alive, one of our favorites. What up? Dead or Alive is probably my favorite one we do. Oh, nice. Mine's for, probably the tweets, but Dead or Alive, we're going to describe a famous individual, and for two points, you're going to tell us if they are currently alive or if they're currently dead, and our first up is a big one, Mr. Bob Barker. Bob Barker is an American retired television game show host. He is known for hosting The Price is Right from 1972 to 2007, making it the longest-running daytime show, daytime game <laughs> show in North American television history. Is Bob Barker the original host of Price is Right, is he dead or alive? Well, our contestants think about this. I just want to make a quick comment. Mm -hmm. I would argue that the Price is Right is the most influential piece of media ever created in the Northern American continent. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it it's perfect in every way. Most influential? Yes, it influences my life every single day. I would I don't, I, I would have said that like Sesame Street is the most influential don't be television silly. program ever made. Don't be silly. Okay, maybe I am silly. We'll see. So is he dead or is he alive? Is Bob Barker dead or alive? Please show us what you said. Alexa said that he is dead. Ooh. And Dan said that he is alive. One of them has to be right. Mathematically <laughs> speaking, that is accurate. Uh, Bob Barker, or Robert William Barker, if you will. Of course. Is alive and 98 years old currently. 
90 so shout out to Bobby, Bobby B. Dan's got it. Yes. Common misconception he did not die fighting Happy Gilmore. Vexillology uh, is the study of flags, by the way. Thank you. I think uh, that was uh, our producer's word of the day. Yeah. But yeah, Bob Barker, 98 and alive. Fantastic. We have one more dead or alive. We do indeed. We do for you guys. Here's our next dead or alive coming up is the musician Gautier. Belgian Australian multi instrumentalist and singer songwriter. He was launched to global fame after his 2011 song, Somebody That I Used to Know, became a worldwide hit. Is Gautier dead or alive? Still writing a little I feel bit. I like think I'm getting thrown through a loop right now. It's a 50 50 shot. A, it is a 50 50 shot. I, Do you have I an answer? I feel like if we got his real name, maybe that would. I can, oh, that I can would, provide that, that you with that. Oh. If, you if you think that would make that both, much of a difference. If both no, of you are, and our so. executive producer are okay. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Yeah. All good. So. All right. Please show me what you said. Alexa said that he is dead. And Dan said that he is alive. Question mark. <laughs> Again, one of them statistically has to be right, Scott. Who Correct. is it? Uh, so. Wooter or Wally the backer, otherwise known as <laughs> Gautier, uh, is six foot four, 41 years old and alive. Wow. Congratulations alive. to Dan for taking another two points. There. I did want to try to throw you for a loop because I thought that like, you know, no one's heard yeah. from him in a decade. <laughs> He yeah. could totally be dead and no one would know. Sorry, Gautier, if you're listening to this, but you know, we have five new topics for you guys. And here they are. Question number one is going to be about U S States. Question number two is going to be about the year in review that year being 2021, the year in review. Question number three is going to be about U S presidents, our favorite. Let's go. He's excited. I'm excited. We're excited. Question number four is going to be about space. And finally, question number five is going to be about movies and music. Again, I'll ask Alexa, any of the five topics jump out of you? Um, not really. Not really. They're all just no, maybe, maybe all just... states. I don't know. States. Right. You know a couple states. Yeah, just a few. Uh, I'm gonna go with movies and music. Mm. Why is that? I watch some movies sometimes. And <laughs> I consider <laughs> myself an avid movie watcher. And with that, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With that, let's jump into question number one of round two. U.S. states. The question is, which U.S. state has the highest population density, which is the ratio of population to land? Again, which U.S. state has the highest population density? Is it New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, or Florida? It's like, all right, show me what you said. Alexa said that it's Rhode Island for five points. Make that more clear over here. (laughs) Rhode Island for five points. And Dan said that it's Rhode Island for four points. Both had the same answer, Scott. That's correct. What's the correct one, though? Not Rhode Island. Uh -uh. Y'all both stupid. It's New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh And with that, let's move on to question number two. Question number two. What was the most streamed song of 2021, according to Spotify metrics? Was it Montero, Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X? <clears throat> was it Stay by Justin Bieber and Kid Leroy? Was it Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo? Or was it Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo? Yeah, and what was the most streamed song of 2021 according to Spotify's metrics? We Spotify or Apple Music people in here? I, I use Spotify personally. That's the correct answer. But I guess I don't have any problems. What if I you didn't have to like... cut me off. I'm somebody that I used to know. When you're doing that, <laughs> he makes a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. All right. We both have answers and wages. I, I, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Please show me what you said. Alexa said driver's license was the most streamed song for four points. And Dan said Montero, call me by your name for three points. One of them's correct, Scott. Yes. And it's Alexa. Alexa. Driver's license, 1.1 billion streams last oh, year on my Spotify. My God. Recording Spotify. A seventh of the population. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I'd say maybe 0.1 billion. Your boy right here. <laughs> <laughs> Song's awesome. Uh, with that, Dan still has a lead, but it's only nine to six now. Ooh, it's so still a tight game. It's, it's getting a little closer. It is anybody's is game. within reach, you could say. Absolutely. So let's go on to question number three of round two. Question number three. Which U.S. president made Mother's Day a <clears throat> national holiday? Was it William Howard Taft, Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, or Warren G. Harding? Well, they write uh, no free ads, so I won't say the brand name or anything, of course. But these skinny bottle <laughs> sparkling juices are so good. I think I've said it before you have, on the yeah. show, but these things are awesome. I just no free yeah. ads. Though. I just want to say thank you for covering up the ice logo, so no one knows yeah. what brand it is. Right. So I couldn't see the ice logo, which means that the audience can't see the ice exactly. logo. Yeah. yeah, so that way nobody will know that like this bottle has the logo that says ice on yeah. it. <laughs> 
Uh, do we have answers and wagers? Yeah. Oh, you, don't yeah. Si- you don't sound That's, too happy. You're sad to say that. No, I am. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> you don't sound excited. You're, you're history class Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you good? Yeah. All right. Uh, please show me what you said. Alexa said that it was. My, yeah, we really got to get you. We got to get you a new marker. She said it was President Harding for three points. And Dan said that it was Woodrow Wilson for one point. Scott, what is the correct answer? The correct answer is the one with the, all the alliteration going on. Woodrow Wilson. Mr. Congratulations Woodrow to Wilson. history class Dan. Question number four. In 1986, the Challenger space shuttle exploded, killing everyone on board. Which Sesame Street character was originally set to be on board? <clears throat> I didn't know that was a thing. Dude, good. <laughs> we can talk about it after the answer. It's crazy. But which Sesame Street character was originally supposed to be on the Challenger? Was it Elmo, Cookie Monster, Ernie, or Big Bird? What year was the Challenger? 1986. Please show me what you said. Alexa said that Big Bird was supposed to be on for two points. And Dan said Big Bird also, also for two points. What's the correct answer, Scott? The correct answer is what they both put that big yellow bird named Big Bird <laughs> was originally supposed to be on the Challenger. So they were going to try to put him on, but they could not. Like the issue was that they could not get a space suit that would both fit Big Bird and his wow. performer in a way that would like, like, like be safe enough for them. So they didn't do it. But could you imagine if the nation's children? <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty crazy. Watched Big Bird explode. Yeah. Crazy. Along with like some kids like watch their teacher and Big that's Bird. like double trauma. That'd be really unfortunate. Crazy. I would want to make a quick note on the master answer sheet here. It does say LOL Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> so. Question number five. <clears throat> Almost every James Bond movie has a famous musician creating a new song for the franchise. Which of these musicians have not created a James Bond theme? Is it Adele, John Legend, Billie Eilish or Sam Smith? And again, which of these musicians have not created a James Bond theme? Yeah. All right. I think we both have uh, answers and wagers, correct? Yep. All right. Please show me what you said. Alexa said that the musician that did not create a Bond theme was Billie Eilish for her mandatory one points. And then Dan said that Sam Smith did not create one for five points. Scott, what's the correct answer? The correct answer is John Legend. John Legend, mm-hmm. not. Uh, so, Corrupt, yeah, yeah, that's uh, like I said, 12 to eight. Nothing changed because you guys both stink. Um, <laughs> I think it's time for something different, though. I guess I'm going to make an executive decision right now and say that we are going to do an ad read right now instead of at the end of the show because I feel like it's a, it's more better suited sure, here. Yeah, so, uh, sure, again, yeah, we have to keep sure, the lights on. Sure, so yeah. I'm going to have my EP pass me an advertisement. I'd like to remind the audience that we uh, are reading this for the first time because, you know, that's just the kind of professionals we are. We don't need rehearsals. Too hard. So let's see what today's ad read says. The front of the envelope says Bryant University, which is the university that everyone in this room attends. Shout out to President Meekly and President Gattel. This is today's ad read, today's sponsor. <clears throat> Bada boom. It's about heck in time that Digcom became a major at prominent Northern Rhode Island universities. I thought to myself, I thought, hmm. Where's Digcom at prominent Northern Rhode Island universities? Kanye West is making headlines because he is limited to being with Southeastern people only and is mad about it. Oh, wait, he just can't be with Northwest. Mama Kim has not only kept Ye's child away from him, but also his children. Kanye managed to be, <laughs> Kanye managed to be a good dad again. Kanye, get it? Let's try a couple more. Digital communications can help you become Kanye West, strongly considered declaring Digcom as a major if you go to a prominent Northern Rhode Island university. If not, try to be a nanny for a single mom who is dating Pete Davidson. Thank Shout you. out to Digital Communications. Thank you to Digital Communications. <laughs> so I saw that news break that, yes. that this prominent uh, Northern Rhode Island university that we all attend yes. announced like, oh, hey, we're going to offer Digcom. I was like, Kind of wish I was a freshman because I probably would have done that. Yeah, for my major. But I'm switching into it now. I'm stuck. Semester, really? yeah. Seriously, did you switch because of the sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys did this for me. I got holes in my shirt. Just found that. That's out. embarrassing. The camera's been picking that up the whole time. It What's is. next? Next is a special round. Let's jump into the special round. Special round. Who tweeted this? <clears throat> We're going to show you a real tweet. You will tell us who tweeted it for two points. Keep in mind, we're going to tell you the dates that uh, the tweets were tweeted. They might help. They might not. So let's go into tweet number one. <laughs> tweet number one was tweeted <laughs> was tweeted in July of 2012. And the tweet reads, rocks, paper, sycor. 
Was that tweeted by Usain Bolts, Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, or Sean White? We got four Olympians. Shout out Olympics. Which Olympian tweeted rocks, paper, sickor in 2012? Please show me who you said. <clears throat> Alexa said that it was Sean White. And Dan said that it was Ryan Lochte, that goofball. Who was it, Scott? Uh, it was indeed Ryan Lochte. Michael Phelps for life. Michael Phelps. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to our next very real tweet. This tweet comes from 2014 and it reads, Hey friends, I lost my Blackberry. So if you're trying to reach me, then text me on one of my three iPhones. What celebrity tweeted that? Was that Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, or Courtney Kardashian? Some, some people in this room think that they could probably metal and ski jump. They said, they told me that, that it didn't look that hard is what I heard from them earlier. So. I, I promise it's difficult. This thing on Twitter is like <clears throat> some crazy number and some statistic. It was like 40% of Americans or something think they could compete in the Olympics. Yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. That's wrong. Um, so let's uh, go, go circle back to the who tweeted this. Who tweeted, hey, friends, I lost my BlackBerry. So if you're trying to reach me, then text me on one of my three iPhones. Who do you think it was? Please show me who you said. Alexa said Paris Hilton and Dan said the Biebs, Justin Bieber. One of them's correct, Scott. Who that's is right. it? That's uh, right. Congratulations to Alexa for being correct Hey-o. here. Paris Hilton did indeed tweet that. Very good choices on that one. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh. <laughs> so 14 to 10, Dan <laughs> currently leads it, but close close enough to, to at least make these last uh, few minutes interesting. And make them count. But believe it or not, uh, Dan, as you know, we typically go to a final question around mm-hmm. now. We're not doing that right this yeah, second. We're going to we're gonna do something different. Round. We're going to another special round. We've done it before. <clears throat> Famous last words for two points. Which of these people said these famous last words? And the famous last words are, it's better to burn out than to fade away. Were those famous last words said by Kurt Cobain, Heath Ledger, Chris Farley, or Frank Sinatra? Just want to get a quick, uh, quick applause check from our in-studio audience. If you are a part of the in-studio audience, I would love if you could just clap and cheer for everybody. Good job, guys. Woo! Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm very happy Sam Reichel is here. I'm happy that you're happy. He, he was my first friend, so there's nobody else I'd want here to support me. Damn, first Normally, friend, like our, ever. our guest gets pretty sad <laughs> a lot of the time when they're in here. They, they think this place sucks. <laughs> so please show me what you said. Alexa said that it was Frank Sinatra. So did Dan. And Dan said it was Frank Sinatra. The sentence again is, it's better to burn out than to fade away. And that was said by Mr. Kurt Cobain yes, in his uh, suicide notes. Those are the last uh, words that he wrote. It's better to burn out than to fade away. So, Scott, again, score update going into the final question. Dan leads it 14 to 10. And it's been exciting because the last couple of games we've played, Dan wins no matter what because he bets safely. But this, is, this one's going to be gonna, Is that going to be the case? This is going to be fun. Is that going to be the case? The <clears throat> final question topic is U.S. states. So, please write down your wager based on your confidence in U.S. US states. states. <clears throat> Let's see what the wages Let's. were. For U.S. states confidence, Alexa is wagering all <laughs> just wow. have all ten points. Yes, and Dan is wagering seven points. Wow! So uh, it a it's lot be can fun. happen yeah. here. The final question: Counting Y as a consonant, which U.S. state has the longest continuous chunk of consonants? Please write down your answer. I'm so excited to see what happens. This is a big episode. This is multiple choice too. 50 states you have yep out so of 50 p- please pick one of the 50 states but man dan Locke has had an incredible run can he continue it and alexa was talking about how unconfident she felt leading into this moment it's true is she gonna rise above she's a state away from she, winning this states. potentially do you have an answer down or are you just no i no no it, it, it take as much time as you need yeah there i'm is. trying to picture the map in my head <laughs> of the u.s <laughs> He's a much more visual learner than I. Mm. He's a deep thinker to that Dan Locke. Wow. <laughs> I just I just told Skelly that I would love to be able to knight somebody on our next episode if he could get the queen over here. Oh. And he points to the queen album <laughs> hung on the wall directly behind me. So, so I think we're going to be knighting somebody Hold next on. episode. Yeah, here's the important question. Which, uh, which of our guests deserves to be knighted? Well, maybe we'll do that in our special bonus episode where we maybe tier list and or rank <laughs> all of our guests that we've ever had. That'll be so much fun. <laughs> I can't wait. 
All right. I still have holes in my shirt, guys. Dan, you ready? I think I'm ready. This is a big. Everybody has an answer. Big moment. Everyone, hold on. <laughs> Everyone has an answer. This could be a giant, giant moment for trivia tank. Let's see what happens. The question was: counting Y as a consonant, which U.S. state has the longest <clears throat> continuous chunk of consonants? Please show me what you said. Alexa said Pennsylvania, and Dan said New Hampshire. Scott. No. Drew, the correct answer is indeed Pennsylvania. Wow, Alexa Barros, congratulations on dethroning. No Dan way. Locke. What was happened? I, I never uh, thought no, that never. I would see the day. Never once that Dan Locke felt we got an EP just leaving this the room is, out of disbelief. This is spectacular. My Dan, God, talk to me. What, I, what was going through the head? I went through every state I could think <clears throat> of. Pennsylvania really a state. We'll have to look that up later. P E N N S Y L V. That is six consonants. Yes. And again, maybe grammatically the Y is technically a vowel there. I will never know the answer to that. However, we clarified in the question that no matter what, it was a consonant. I appreciate Dan thinking outside the box, being like, oh, the Y thing is just there to throw me off. Yeah. Mm. And shooting with the home state. I didn't even think that. I just couldn't think of a state besides, like, Wyoming that had a Y in it. Fair enough. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Pennsylvania is an awkward one. But uh, congratulations to Alexa. What's going through your mind right now? This is a big moment. I I honestly wasn't expecting to win. And I wagered all 10 points because, obviously, it's either all or nothing. Go big or go home. Either I win or I don't. I appreciate that. That's that's crazy. It was go big or go home, I, and you're not going home. I am in a state of euphoria. Wow. Wow. Sunday, yeah. Just like we predicted. <laughs> Dan, you have had the single most historic run that this show has ever witnessed. What is a standing ovation what's, from our what's, studio audience? He's covering the camera even. <laughs> Thank you. What is going through your head right now, sir? I'm happy to be part of history. Oh, my God. Wow. You, you are the history. <laughs> I'm just happy. You are the history. Dan... As a show, we'd like to sincerely thank you for the weeks and weeks and weeks that you have put in. It has been an incredible run, but all good things must come to an end. Thank you so much for playing Trivia Tank. Are there any last words you'd like to say to our uh, audience? I'll see you in the S tier. I'll see wow. you. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. What an exit line. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, so, Dan, again, thank you. As Drew said, I, I just want to echo all of that. Um, don't think that you're never coming back. Mm-hmm. There's there's certainly, we have certainly something uh, that we have. In maybe the in the works uh that would include some of our past contestants but as much as i want to you know thank and remember dan i really just need to congratulate Alexa. absolutely that is well fantastic. done today uh final score of 20 to 7 that wow. final wager question obviously really did it in for for everybody uh so congratulations thank Huge. you and thank you for having me and yeah. thank you to sam reichelt for coming to support me <laughs> <laughs> Sam just wanted to inform everybody that he was really hoping to play Dan, uh, but because, and I'm quoting here, because stupid Alexa, <laughs> he no, no longer has that chance. So. But what a fantastic historical episode that we just had. Mind blowing even. I wonder if somebody wants to come sing the theme song. <laughs> Not right this second, but hopefully uh, we get the theme song in here. I in hope so. Do you want to close this out while we wait? We will be back sometime next week where Alexa takes on a new What's the challenger? New <laughs> challenger uh, for Alexa sometime next week. So keep your eyes and ears peeled out for that. And with that, I'm Scott Van Conant. That's Drew Waldron. This is Trivia Tank. Let's sing the song. <laughs> it's Trivia Tank with Drew and Scott. Trivia Tank, you'll learn a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. See you next time.